One, two, three. My name is Staff Sergeant Alicia Robkin, and I'm a paramedic assigned to the 455th Expeditionary Medical Group. I'm a paramedic in the emergency department, so we receive patients who are acutely injured or sick, and we take care of them. From the day I came into the Air Force, I wanted to be a paramedic. I love being able to take care of patients and hopefully save a life and be able to make them feel better leaving us than when they came in. My name is Major John Sunken. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the 455th Medical Group here in Bagram, Afghanistan. Today we just finished operating on a patient who sustained a gunshot wound to his thigh. It was treated at an Afghan hospital and developed a serious infection uh, which required an amputation. And after washing him out multiple times to get rid of that infection, we were finally able to close him out. You know, I think our whole mission here is to obviously support Afghanistan. We do treat a lot of Afghan patients, and uh, we're working very closely with our Afghan partners uh, who are defending their country as well as ours. The most rewarding part of my job is certainly being able to fix people's problems and then watch them return back to uh, a normal life the best they can. It's definitely uh, amazing to see people do that and to be a part of that. I think that's sized right, sir. <laughs> Sergeant Major Marsh, I want to tell you the impact you've had on my life as commander here in my job has been significant. It's helped me to be a better commander. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Really appreciate what you've done. It's been a pleasure to serve with you. Cool. stable this area is given the difficult fighting that's going to go on here. So the, the, the 203 Corps, the police on the NDS, you are a front line against the economy. Oh, right. Oh, okay. If it's easy, the body is going to be put in another room. Just part of the base. To prevent it from exposure. Oh, and it's very sad. And security issues and women's role in peace and reconciliation. And most of these came by here in Colorado. Normal days about the uh, 60 deliveries we have and <laughs> My name is Senior MJ Griggs. I'm with the 455th In Route Patient Staging Squadron in Bagram Airfield. In Bagram Airfield, I work as an aerospace medical technician. My mission is to ensure that all wounded warriors are transported out of the deployment theater and returned home safely. During the mission, I assume the role is Bulldog. The role of the Bulldog is important because the Bulldog makes sure that all the mission times are met and the patients get out of here on time and are able to receive the advanced care that they need that can't be provided here at Bagram. Working in the medical field for the military expands my skills and puts me in unique situations that I probably won't find anywhere else. What brings me the most satisfaction about this job is knowing that when you see the stories about wounded warriors on television and what they went through that 
we were a part of that process and we were directly involved with them returning back to their families. Some days we get a cold cough, chest pain or uh, back pain and we have days where we do have a mask out where you know we can get 10, 11 patients coming in through, through our trauma bay and at that time it's when myself and my fellow medics who work in the ER we uh, assist the providers and the nurses with providing the medical care. I am a trauma nurse. My job is to work in the ER. Uh, any trauma patient that comes through our doors, we're here to give them the life-saving procedures that they might need to make sure that they can make it home to their family safely. In the emergency room, we kind of just deal with extremes all the time. and We take care of mass casualties and like any other level one trauma center um, back in the States, it's not as robustly staffed and However, it, it does fulfill every requirement that we have out here to be the, the most definitive care that you could get medically in the AOR. We work very hard to practice our uh, disaster team preparedness and our mass casualty uh, plan. We're also the rule three hospital in the region that takes care of the AOR for definitive care for our uh, coalition, Afghan military and U.S. service members that are carrying out the mission. An emergency nurse takes care of any patients that are trauma related that come through through the emergency department here at Craig Joint Theater Hospital. Um, we're part of a team. Of course, everybody on that team has a very specific role, but uh, we have to work together as one. Back home, uh, it's, it's always training, um, but you don't know what you're going to come into. So it's just about being flexible. So we train a lot on our medical side, uh, you know, staying up on our medical skills. And then every few years we have to go to Camp Bolas down in Texas and that's where they put us in the tents and, and really prepare us for this type of environment. Here is very limited resources so you have to be very creative on what the surgeons need and what we have here and what they can use. So that's where it can kind of get a little tricky. I'm a reservist so back home I have a completely different career field. In the military I'm a medic, outside I'm a nurse and I actually work in the emergency room, so you get to see a lot of back home in here, um, and it's, it's just a great experience overall. One of my favorite moments is, uh, I love ortho. Orthopedic surgeries are my favorite, and our biggest procedures would be uh, totals, replacing total joints. Uh, the first day I was able to actually complete one of those on my own. Uh, with no help, even the uh, reps that we normally have teaching us how to use their instruments didn't even need to help me. So it just lets me know that I'm progressing and learning how to do my job efficiently. When the, everything hits the fan, it's organized chaos. Everybody's running around, but we all have their specific functions. We all kind of mesh together to form that one team. And we can have gunshot wounds. We can have someone that has had a stroke. You had someone that had a heart attack. Um, so you can have CPR going on. You can have a med tech over in another spot giving them blood. You can burn up a whole unit of blood, which is almost 350 mill milliliters, in about a minute, just trying to make sure the per person doesn't lose enough blood to pass away, essentially. Well, at home, actually, I'm a, a labor and delivery nurse, so it's very different for me. I take care of laboring moms and help deliver babies. I, uh, here, uh, we're taking care of the, the people that go out and put their lives on the line every day. I treat them as a family member, because there's some family, there are some patients that come that don't have family. So when you interview them and you ask them if they have anybody here with them and they say no, that's when I hold a hand and say, I'm your family now so that way they don't feel like they're by themselves. When you send your brothers and sisters back home and you know they're gonna go back to their family, it means a lot. Um, we take a lot of pride on our mission here and that day that we uh, sent out the first patient going back home, it meant a lot to me. Blasts and gunshot wounds are a constant threat to Afghan soldiers. Doctors and nurses on Bagram Airfield are committed to ensuring Afghan medical providers have the tools and resources to take the lead. It is incumbent upon us to make sure that we're leaving them with a, a medical system that's ready to go and do 
the trauma mission because we anticipate that that will continue even after we're gone. The Afghan Trauma Mentorship Program at the Craig Joint Theater Hospital has been training Afghan medical professionals since 2007. The purpose of the Afghan uh, Training Mentorship Program is to take local nationals, including those that belong to ANSF, and we bring them to our institution to help them get more hands-on skills and also to see how our hospitals work in the hopes that they can take some of those back and help um, build their infrastructure back at their own facilities. For Afghan doctors, this is very helpful because uh, they doesn't have any modern equipment, so they understanding and they can use these things they learn from American doctors. There's a lot to be gained by seeing how our folks run their equipment. Um, even though our equipment is different than what they would have at a, a local facility, it's still it's the principle behind how we interact, how we work, and how we make those decisions that, that I think they need to see. Army Private Christina McKenzie, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Flight medics, ground medics, doctors, nurses, and medical providers stroll around the flight line visiting different medical evacuation aircraft in a series of static displays for the 2014 Afghanistan Medical Transport Symposium on Bagram Airfield. The event helped to shed light on what in-route care providers do. It's not typical training. This is the first time I've seen something like this happen, but I think it's good. It got a lot of people that maybe weren't familiar with what we do more familiar and uh, it gives them the ability to, to really see what, what we can do and the, the care that we can provide to those patients before they see them. This trauma symposium has been incredibly informative and, and assisting me with learning how to do my job a little bit better. My job, we don't do point of injury. Um, mainly what we focus on is, is clinical medical treatment. It's, it's good to know every step of the process in order to treat my patient better. One reason for the historically high survival rates during Operation Enduring Freedom is because of the high level of care in the air and also because of quick evacuation off the battlefield. Training like this will ensure that the U.S. and coalition troops receive the best level of care throughout the entire medical process. Reporting from Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Haley Zimmerman. It's Korean Armed Forces Day at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan, and the Special Forces demonstrate their fighting capabilities. But while Korea continues to play an active role in combating the insurgency and has recently pledged to extend their troop deployment in Afghanistan, it is the commitment to improving healthcare and education that has been most keenly felt by the local Afghan population of Parwan province and beyond. Having suffered their own war in recent history, the Koreans know what it takes to redevelop a nation, as Captain Kang sang Bua explains. The Korean hospital on Bagram Air Base was officially opened in April 2010 and treats local Afghan people almost exclusively, boasting a dental unit, surgery patient and x-ray rooms, a pharmacy, modern medicines and physiotherapy practitioners. The facility has treated over 80,000 patients since it opened. For some patients, such as Moman Khan, who came to the hospital several months after badly injuring his leg in a fall, the treatment he has received has made a very big difference indeed. With mentoring programs designed to train Afghan doctors, nurses and pharmacists, as well as employing local administration staff, the Koreans hope they'll be leaving the hospital in capable hands. But it isn't just healthcare where they hope to leave a lasting legacy. We have to make a circuit for the motor. We have a circuit, we have a map. Just next door to the hospital is the Korean Vocational College, opened in 2010. Jointly funded by both the Koreans and Americans, it is designed to educate students in a variety of vocations, including vehicle mechanics, construction, welding, plumbing, electrics, IT, and computer repair. <laughs> 2010년, 2011년 190명이 졸업을 했고 모두 다 취업을 한 상태에 있습니다. 현재 학생은 127명으로 이 학생들도 올해 12월달에 졸업하는데 취업을 
수축해서 열심히 노력하고 있습니다. According to a USAID study, life expectancy for Afghans has increased from 42 to 62 over the past 10 years, and there are now 3.2 million girls in schools compared to just 50,000 under the Taliban. With Afghanistan entering a new autonomous post-Taliban era, institutions that focus on improving education and healthcare, such as the Korean Hospital and Vocational College, are helping the country build towards a brighter future. This is Jake Tutman reporting from Bagram, Afghanistan for the NATO channel. I am an entry controller and I am the NCUIC for the Korean Field Hospital out here. So I monitor our team of uh, biometric scanners. We bring local nationals from the outside into the hospital, into the confines of the base to get them the treatment they need. We bring students from the outside to learn these trades that they can improve upon their country when we leave. Every day is a constant battle with the cultural, the, the gender issues that we deal with and the, the airmen do a great job. So My job here is pretty much to process Allied and coalition forces as they enter Bagram Airfield to ensure the safety of everyone that enters the base and everyone on the base. Two things we're going to do, we're going to either track or enroll. Uh, your tracking is usually your students, or your doctors, and some local nationals that have been here before, um, or any other base that runs this biometric system. We'll scan their iris and it'll let us know that they've been here before on the central database and that they're good to go to get medical treatment or go to school like some, some individuals do. Uh, enroll is the other thing we do here, and that's a uh, local national comes in, never been here before, enroll them in the central database. That way, anytime they go to any base installation that runs the system, uh, they will know that they've been on base before and they're good to go. You don't want someone that has no patience doing a coin mission out here. Um, with the language barrier, uh, you also need to be a quick learner. Just for Taiwan speaking. So it takes a uh, an experienced defender with a certain type of maturity level. Um, they are basically ambassadors for the United States Air Force every single day working with the local nationals. Um, and it takes a, a certain type of a fortitude to do what they do. I'm, I feel lucky that I have these type of defenders working for me. Uh, my first deployment to UAE, and there was a chapel team that I was introduced to there. And I began to volunteer with them. Hey, hey, hey. And I, we did fly line ministry. From there on, I knew, I said, hey, this is it. I really enjoy this. Here in 2009 as a weapons loader, and now here I am again as a, as a chaplain assistant. But people will ask that question. They'll say, how did you go from maintenance to chap corps? To be honest, I'm still a maintainer. Now we maintain personnel. We maintain the most important resource in the Air Force, which is the men and women that we serve with, you know. It's just, this is my full-time job now. I get to do ministry full-time. That is my job. Amen. You know, that's my job. <laughs> Yes. I would say the physical injury is only Smiles. only Smiles. part of the injury. We are embedded within the hospital. Um, yeah. God does amazing things Smiles. in this hospital. He allows the doctors, the medics, you know, low ops, low ops. every person in this hospital to heal these people. He gives them the capability to help heal them. Um, same as us, um, we just facilitate that, that healing. I think to leave. I believe we, we send them out stronger. Fives. I'm back out to the field stronger than before when they came in. <laughs> Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Yep, God bless you. I was going to come in and come in on time. And in a really in true military fashion, what's the decision? With
The purpose of the MRI systems is to enhance your capability to diagnose and treat traumatic brain injuries. Kandahar, Bastion, and Bagram were chosen as the MRI fielding sites to bring this advanced technology closer to the points of injury of our wounded warriors. Personnel at Kandahar Airfield's Roll 3 Hospital not only provide care for NATO and Afghan forces, but support other medical facilities in the Kandahar region. Part of what we do is to build capacity in the Afghan medical system. Aside from providing trauma care, the hospital focuses on prevention to include preparation of medications, anthrax and smallpox vaccines, and oral care. Row 3's commitment to providing the best care anywhere will continue to support not only coalition forces, but the people of Afghanistan. Their police force, their security forces need to know that they can go forward. And if something happens to them in harm's way, that they will be taken care of. Reporting from Kandahar Airfield, Afghanistan, I'm Sergeant Rodney Rodan. Walam Hazrat describes the accident that brought him, his daughter Sitara, and his grandson Ajmal here to the Craig Joint Theater Hospital at Bagram Airfield. He says that while the women were cooking in his kitchen during a family gathering, a gas explosion destroyed his home. Two people died from their injuries, one of whom was Walam's wife, mother to Sitara and grandmother to Ajmal. While he arrived with relatively minor burns to his hands, his daughter and grandson didn't fare so well. When they arrived, Ajmal not only had burns to his face, arm, and foot, but also suffered from smoke inhalation. Sitara had burns on her face and legs. But the children's grievous injuries haven't kept the hospital staff from absolutely falling in love with them, particularly little Ajmal. While Sitara is a daddy's girl and gets upset if her father leaves her side, Ajmal is pretty much content as long as he's being held, especially if there's a juice box in it for him. Because Sitara is a little older and has a reputation for being a bit willful, the staff have developed a soft spot for Ajmal. And at just one year old, he's a big draw. Everybody loves him. He, he's just been really sweet. He's got these huge dark brown eyes and, you know, just really makes your heart kind of go out to him that you want to help and do nice things for him. So pretty much everybody on staff loves him. <laughs> he's my baby. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I've, so far I've grown, I've grown pretty attached to him. It's not just he's my patient. He, you know, I'm, he's, I almost look at him like a, a little brother now, so I want him to get better, and it might sound cheesy, but, yeah, he, I love that kid. The complicated and advanced care that this family received would have otherwise been impossible outside of the American facilities. The modern equipment alone is simply too expensive and inaccessible for most Afghan hospitals to get, so it's all but certain that without the treatment they received here, this family may have not been so fortunate. Even though Mr. Hazarat's family is physically on the mend, they still face the cold reality of having lost a wife, mother, and grandmother. Still, through both the physical and emotional anguish of the last several weeks, Hualam says he's grateful for the modern treatment Bagram's hospital staff have been able to provide, as well as the care, nothing short of love, that his daughter and grandson have been showered with since the day they arrived. I'm Staff Sergeant Larry Moore, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. The Korean Hospital at Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan is a training hospital for Afghan medical workers. They see an average of 60 local patients a day and treat them for minor injuries and illnesses. And our interns are from a province nearby Korean Hospital and through this agreement we can teach how to to take care of uh, the common surgical disease and also how to take care of uh, the common uh, patients. The Korean hospital can treat minor injuries and diagnose patients, but they don't have inpatient facilities or operating rooms. However, Bagram's Egyptian Field Hospital does. Representatives of the two facilities are signing a memorandum of understanding that will allow them to share the use of the Egyptians' inpatient facilities and an operating room. I think that the best part of this agreement is uh, we um, uh, can be um, working together and can do um, co collaborating with the uh, Egyptian hospital and uh, through um, sharing uh, medical equipment and facilities. 
the Egyptian hospital benefits because they'll be able to use the Koreans' endoscopy room and x-ray equipment. This agreement will give both hospitals the opportunity to provide care to patients that they couldn't in the past. That, in turn, will help these hospitals help the Afghan people to help themselves. Airman First Class Regina Mulder, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. This week, Joint Coalition Forces celebrated the grand reopening of the Korean hospital on Bagram Airfield. Several Afghan political figures, along with top combined Joint Task Force military officials, attended the opening ceremony, which was kicked off with the signing of a memorandum of joint authority by coalition forces. The Korean hospital has played a key role in the support and stabilization of Afghanistan since 2001, but closed in December of 2007 for renovations and technological upgrades. Military officials say the reopening is a welcomed asset to the mission at hand. It's actually a very good beginning to uh, the start of our new direction and not just providing humanitarian care day to day for the Afghan nation, but also to start uh, building some more engagement and uh, building of the medical community within the local uh, population. The new hospital administrators plan to contribute even more to the health and wellness of the Afghan people with their Korean medical and vocational training team. The team aims to provide medical treatment and train medical professionals throughout Afghanistan. Reporting from Bagram Airfield, Army PFC, Robert Quintero. I expected to work with, you know, our military folks and uh, our, our allies and taking care of them. Not in a thousand years did I expect that I would help a child learn to walk again. A little six-year-old girl with a gunshot wound in the tibia, which is below the knee. I have a seven-year-old little girl, so that kind of resonated with me. But I think anybody would, you know, geez, I mean, you come here expecting to see war trauma. I don't know that I was geared up initially to see trauma in a six-year-old. I guess I should have thought that could happen. I just hadn't uh, wrapping my mind around that was a little bit. They brought her to us to try to either save the leg or save her life. I mean, step one, save the life. So stop the bleeding, prevent infection, and then figure out what you can salvage from there. We tried to take a muscle from her back and tie it into an artery, taking the artery with it, tie it into an artery on her leg and unfortunately that was unsuccessful. That was a low point, that was tough to, to live with. And of course, you know, everybody around, well, she's a child, pediatric, those vessels are so small, anybody could have it happen, there's high energy wound, but none of that really helps you. You're just laying in bed going, what did I do wrong to not make that work? There were uh, three guys that I called on back home, uh, but I mean, the calls were coming from me at you know one in the morning. Go, hey, wh what would you do in this scenario? And they're like, wait, wait, wh who are you again <laughs> at one in the morning? But yeah, it was very helpful, and I've uh, you know I've tried to tell those guys thank you. I think she was still a little scared, a little nervous, um, just the new people, new faces. She had never seen us before, so she was very quiet, wasn't as um, active as she is now, and didn't speak much, didn't know any English at all when she first um, arrived here. Now she knows so much English. Um, she has her own little personality. It has come out. She put our names on her arm in henna and she had it all over. And so when I came in to work that night, she was so excited. She was, Amanda, Amanda, come see, look at my arm. And she showed me her arm and she was just so proud to have our names on her arm. It was amazing. Um, but even before she had the henna, she would kind of pretend that the markers were henna and she'd grab our hands and grab my hand and do little decorations on my hand and it was just too cute. Initially, you know, every time I came to see her, she would immediately hide and start crying and worrying about what, what I was going to do. Um, and now she, you know, she sees me and she's like, are we going to walk? Are we going to? And she's ready to exercise and she knows kind of what to expect. I just asked one of the nurses that was taking care of her, thank you so much for what you do. I know you spend all your time with her. I know it must be tiring. 
helping doing all the dressing changes and carrying her and diaper changes for a while and getting her in and out of the wheelchair for a while. And they're like, no, man, it's, you know, that's how I, it's made the deployment great. I just hate to see her go. So I think everybody has had a blessing here from her. The opportunity that it, that it's given me to, to serve, but also to grow and to be challenged in a different way, it's helped me really stay connected with my family as far as, you know, when I go and work with her, I, I see any one of my children. And to know that, uh, you know, to see, you know, if it were one of my children in that situation, I'd want whoever was working with them to give everything that they had to make sure that they could have a life again. Having lost her folks, her parents, not having a dowry for a marriage someday, not really having her parents to raise her, and then being a, a female in this culture can be a challenge in and of itself. So add that, that no parents in a situation where, you know, um, she's gonna be living with in-laws, probably uh, aunt and uncles, it's a tough situation. And even they were coming to me expressing that uh, if she were to lose her leg, that it would be especially difficult for her here in Afghanistan. Prairie Joint Theater Hospital is kind of a collection point for other hospitals around the Afghanistan area. A lot of traumas that come in have been seen at another forward operating base and then our surgeons do more finalized surgery before sending them back. It's kind of the same that I do when I'm at home. The difference is the trauma that we see and the trauma that we deal with. So here it's just on a higher level. I run, I wish I had skates <laughs> some days. Um, you, you run a lot and grab stuff and um, you're helping out wherever you can help. You do whatever you can do. I, we get every fourth day off and but we're still on call so chances are you know we could have to work and um, I've never worked this much. <laughs> if we have traumas we have traumas and nobody seems to mind you know we know what the mission is. For the nurses and the techs we get called in in the middle of the night and when you do you come in you do your part and if you have a few moments to take a cat nap or run and take a shower you just you do that and then you come back ready to go. We do go for trauma training before um, we deploy uh, the, but the trauma there, I don't think it compares to here. When you have, when you see people who are uh, quadruple amputees, stuff like that, it's really hard to prepare for that. You just have to do the best you can. And like I said, the way for me to get through it is, is I think of them, they're the true heroes and I'm helping them get home. I mean, we go through training for the basic setups, for the equipment, but when it comes down to the real people, it, it's all about what it is you have inside to help prepare you. We all, we all have our days. We all have our days when it just gets to you. And the other day I saw one of our surgeons cry and I had to look away because I knew that when I saw him that I was gonna start crying. You see a lot of trauma here that you never see at home, never see at home. So you have to pull that inner self in you out. But that doesn't mean we lose who we are. I mean, no matter how much you see or when you think you've seen the worst, something will come in and it will get to you. And even though it stinks and you're tired and you're exhausted and some days your whole body hurts, um, it's, it's, it's worth it because, like I said, these guys go home. One day we had some guy who wrote thank you on a piece of paper and held it up to us because he couldn't talk to us. I mean, that gets to you. That's when you cry. That's when you're like, that's what I'm here for. From the OR nurses at Craig Joint Theater Hospital, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, we wish we were there. Take care, and we'll see you next year. Bye-bye. Most patients treated at the American Hospital at Bagram Airfield have war-related injuries. However, sometimes injuries are completely accidental. Staff Sergeant Larry Moore tells us about one Afghan family that fell victim to a terrible accident. Walam Hazra says that while the women were cooking in his kitchen during a family gathering, a gas explosion destroyed his home. His daughter and grandson didn't fare so well. When they arrived, Ajmal not only had burns to his face, arm and foot, but also suffered from smoke inhalation. Sitara had burns on her face and legs. 
but the children's grievous injuries haven't kept the hospital staff from absolutely falling in love with them, particularly little Ajmal. So far, I've grown, I've grown pretty attached to him. He's, I almost look at him like a, a little brother now, so I want him to get better, and it might sound cheesy, but yeah, he, I love that kid. Walam says he's grateful for the modern treatment Bagram's hospital staff have been able to provide. I'm Staff Sergeant Larry Moore, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. You know how you have the Afghan flag? This is the American flag. My name is Helen Jeshow and I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. I am a 37 Fox, which is Military Information Support Operations Specialist. Can I try to throw yours? Are you going to catch it? Okay, ready? Uh oh. Let me see. I enlisted in the Army to support the efforts that are going on here overseas. Did you get one? You got one? Is it good? It's very good, isn't it? I think everybody should be more supportive of the efforts that are going on over here. My name is Specialist Helen Jeshow, and this is why I serve. That's the wrong side of jungle. Check out that pinky toe. Yeah, that's, that's from wearing jungle, that's from wearing jungle boots that are too small. Yeah, you've been doing some rocking. Hey, sir, I appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. We'll pack MDs. They're about half the half quarter of the weight and they do twice as much. What we do is to build capacity in the Afghan medical system. We need to keep that. Uh, their soldiers, their police force, their security forces need to know that they can go forward and if something happens to them in harm's way that they will be taken care of. That's very powerful. That's very powerful in setting up security forces for a nation that they know that they can be taken care of and if anything happens to them they will have the best care possible. Uh, we make a significant difference um, in terms of the treatment that we offer the soldiers, sailors and airmen. Uh, of all nations that come into the hospital uh, and um, we know that from uh, various statistics that dental morbidity is very high up in terms of non-battlefield injuries and so by giving treatment to soldiers in theatre we're helping to return to the front line. The thing that we're particularly proud of is the Care for the Caregiver program. So especially here at the Roll 3 hospital, we have uh, some sometimes terrible traumas that come in and people get exposed to a lot of things that they may not see in the civilian world. So um, we offer a, a group and some individual appointments for people to come in and just talk about what's on their mind, whether it's something that they've seen or just being away from family and just make sure that they're, um, they're able to, to deal with it. And it's kind of uh, off the books, so it's not an, an official mental health visit, just to kind of uh, boys, people, spirits, and keep them going. Wait, sir. Nice to meet you.
Actually, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the wife she's going to out of the country, of course. Yeah, is this the first time she's traveled out of the country without you? Uh, actually, no. She's been. Out so, how are things with your sister? Um, she, she's going into. Okay. Um, no, you should do that back there. Okay, thanks. The trauma bay itself. Sure. So, would you be willing to, to do I may um, do that lunch today with that lady. I'm waiting for a call. Oh, okay. We're multinational, and she's specifically named the Dental oh, Royal. Go, the go. Royal uh, yeah. Dental. Natalie, you have that. So, blasts and gunshot wounds are a constant threat to Afghan soldiers. Doctors and nurses on Bagram Airfield are committed to ensuring Afghan medical providers have the tools and resources to take the lead. It is incumbent upon us to make sure that we're leaving them with a, a medical system that's ready to go and do the trauma mission because we anticipate that that will continue even after we're gone. The Afghan Trauma Mentorship Program at the Craig Joint Theater Hospital has been training Afghan medical professionals since 2007. The purpose of the Afghan Training Mentorship Program is to take local nationals, including those that belong to ANSF, and we bring them to our institution to help them get more hands-on skills and also to see how our hospitals work in the hopes that they can take some of those back can help um, build their infrastructure back at their own facilities. Army Private Christina McKenzie, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. <laughs> IED blasts and gunshot wounds are a constant threat to Afghan soldiers. Doctors and nurses on Bagram Airfield are committed to ensuring Afghan medical providers have the tools and resources to take the lead. It is incumbent upon us to make sure that we're leaving them with a, a medical system that's ready to go and do the trauma mission because we anticipate that that will continue even after we're gone. The Afghan Trauma Mentorship Program at the Craig Joint Theater Hospital has been training Afghan medical professionals since 2007. The purpose of the Afghan Training Mentorship Program is to take local nationals, including those that belong to ANSF, and we bring them to our institution to help them get more hands-on skills and also to see how our hospitals work in the hopes that they can take some of those back can help um, build their infrastructure back at their own facilities. Army Private Christina McKenzie, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Blood, their hemoglobin, and their pressure load. So if you give them more fluid and the more advanced ways, like, I don't know whether that's your brain, your kidneys, your lungs, 
Uh, needle decompression in chest tube. So we're going to open this up so the Okay, and now go ahead and advance it far here because you don't need that anymore. Because gloves, but so you have the glove and, and has pain medicine, so he's got pro Okay, and so now remember that on this one, and then go in that way. Clavicola. Yeah, uh -huh. this is the clavicola for this. So you get it in here and then you aim water in the syringe, a little normal saline. Okay. So, okay, so that's probably in as far as you can. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the end. We think okay. it's, it's gone. It's so, so now here's your here's your scalpel. Yeah, we're not gonna cut this guy, but you put it right here. Okay, so we have this prepared like that. Mm -hmm. So so you know that this is mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. Now the only notch and so you're going to go in here. The ambulance or the helicopters are right out the other side there. That's life threatening and need to fix it. And then I know he doesn't have a huge spinal fracture. Yes, yes, you can. You can actually, so you can use the chest x ray to make sure that it's where it belongs. You put the right spine. So you shoot those two x rays. Yeah, he's got a page after Bola and it's me. Now this looks like, so if you know, you know, think about your anatomy. Right, friend? Yeah, exactly. Great imaging right there. Uh, arms. Yeah, right there. Is there already bleeding? So, you make the bleeding the lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So sick that they need to go to the operating room immediately. Here's all your toes for me. Okay, so when I spoke to them, that, that you won't be able to tell the difference. Oh, that's true. So if they have a sight. So this is. Uh, yes, it should be just. It is incumbent upon us to make sure that we're leaving them with a, a medical system that's ready to go and, and do the trauma mission because we anticipate that that will continue even after we're gone. And as we transition and we take more U.S. medical assets out of theater, we need them to be able to take care of their own um, injuries that occur to the security forces. Excellent. So um, I, we want them to come here not just to get the medical skills, but um, perhaps more importantly is that they see how a medical system is supposed to work. So. They see the, our, how our nurses interact with our physicians because there's a lot of communication and, and um, intangible things we work on as a team that I think really improve medical care both stateside and here that I'm not sure they have in the, the local uh, medical population because I think there's a lot to be gained by seeing how our folks run their equipment um, even though our equipment is different than what they would have at a, a local facility it's still it's the principle behind how we interact how we work and how we make those decisions that, that I think they need to see Uh, the purpose of the Afghan uh, training mentorship program is to take um, local um, nationals, um, including those that belong to ANSF. So it could be American National Army, I'm sorry, Afghan National Army, Afghan National Police. Um, and we take them and we bring them to our institution to help them get more hands-on skills and also um, to see how our hospitals work in the hopes that they can take some of those back can help um, build their infrastructure back at their own facilities. About trauma, so uh, especially we work at ANP hospitals, so we face with different, different uh, trauma in emergency room. So when we know about the help for these people, especially that mm, they come from uh, war area, so we can help them at the uh, first step in emergency room and the last step we can do in OR. Yes. I'm pretty thankful for today's ceremony that we are opening the Korean hospital which has been built and, re uh, and constructed by the government of the Republic of Korea. Three, two, one. The Afghans, Koreans and other coalition force members participated in a ribbon cutting ceremony on Bagram Airfield. The Korean PRT finished their 10-month construction project for a new hospital and technical vocational center to help the people of Parwan. 
The Korean deputy foreign minister said this idea started two years ago during a visit to an Afghan hospital. I visited this place uh, two years ago and I found a small and shabby Korean hospital where hundreds of Afghan people were waiting for uh, care by the doctor. So I thought uh, we need to build a much bigger hospital with uh, much better uh, facilities in order to serve, better serve for the people of Afghanistan. The Korean PRT built a technical vocational center to help train local Afghan students in a one-year course that includes automotive, welding, and computer science skills. The school's chief of administration says the school will help the area's economy. The Korean PRT hopes the hospital and school will help the Afghan people in Parwan and surrounding areas bring a better way of life. Army Sergeant Victor Gardner, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. To around the Air Force. Most patients treated at the American Hospital at Bagram Airfield have war-related injuries. However, sometimes injuries are completely accidental. Staff Sergeant Larry Moore tells us about one Afghan family that fell victim to a terrible accident. Hualam Hazrat describes the accident that brought him, his daughter Sitara, and his grandson Ajmal here to the Craig Joint Theater Hospital at Bagram Airfield. He says that while the women were cooking in his kitchen during a family gathering, a gas explosion destroyed his home. His daughter and grandson didn't fare so well. When they arrived, Ajmal not only had burns to his face, arm, and foot, but also suffered from smoke inhalation. Sitara had burns on her face and legs. But the children's grievous injuries haven't kept the hospital staff from absolutely falling in love with them, particularly little Ajmal. And at just one year old, he's a big draw. Everybody loves him. He, he's just been really sweet. He's got these huge dark brown eyes and, you know, just really makes your heart kind of go out to him that you want to help and do nice things for him. So pretty much everybody on staff loves him. <laughs> he's my baby. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I've, so far I've grown, I've grown pretty attached to him. It's not just he's my patient. He, you know, I'm, he's, I almost look at him like a, a little brother now, so I want him to get better, and it might sound cheesy, but, yeah, he, I love that kid. The complicated and advanced care that this family received would have otherwise been impossible outside of the American facilities. The modern equipment alone is simply too expensive and inaccessible for most Afghan hospitals to get, so it's all but certain that without the treatment they received here, this family may have not been so fortunate. I'm Staff Sergeant Larry Moore, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Three years, the doctors, nurses, and soldiers assigned to the Korean hospital on Bagram Airfield have seen a continuous stream of patients from the local community and from coalition forces stationed in Afghanistan. From the occasional cold all the way to major trauma injuries, the hospital has reached a huge milestone in combat care. They have now treated 150,000 patients. That may seem like a huge number, but the accomplishments of the team don't stop there. They also spend a great deal of time providing civil assistance to towns and cities around the airfield. After this many patients, it may seem like it's time to slow down. That's the furthest thing from the minds of the hospital staff. As the commander of Korean hospital, I promise that all members of our hospital will provide the best medical support to the people of Afghanistan and to the coalition forces until the last day of our mission. According to members of the Afghan community, the Korean hospital is a vital part of the local area health care, and the local community is not the only group that recognizes the importance and the impact of their mission here. And Colonel Lee, Colonel Che, I want to thank you and your staff for working so hard to bring peace and prosperity to the Afghan people. During the commemoration ceremony, a painting was unveiled to remember the work done by all the staff of the hospital. The painting was done by one of the nurses at the hospital and symbolizes the job the Koreans do every day to help ease some of the suffering endured by Afghan citizens. From Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan, I'm Staff Sergeant Lee Travis, AFN News. The construction of a more than $40 million South Korean medical and training facility is now underway at Bagram Airfield. Task Force Med Commander Air Force Colonel Joseph Chizinski tells us the new facility will help increase medical service capabilities within Afghanistan. 
This will enable the Koreans to have a much greater capacity and offer care to far greater numbers of the local population, as well as become a referral center for health care for the region. This increased number of patients will also require an increased number of South Korean medical professionals, from the 16 on staff now to an estimated 100 in the future. They see local nationals every day. They line up outside and can see great numbers of patients. Colonel Chizinski goes on to say the joint goal of the new facility is to provide hope for those who may otherwise never receive quality health care. Senior Airman Jared Watson, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. A Taekwondo demonstration kicked off the celebration of the 250,000th patient treated at the Korean hospital located at Bagram Air Base. The Korean hospital provides a basic level of care, treating colds, giving checkups, and taking care of minor injuries for the Afghan locals. I'm very proud that we are helping these people. I will continue to do my job and provide care with love and sincerity. This local Afghan woman was the 250,000th patient. After seeing the doctor, the hospital presented her a gift. I've been coming here to receive treatment for heart disease. I'm thankful for the treatment that they give. The hospital staff is very modest about the number of patients they have treated. The number is not important. What is meaningful is that we actually help the people of Afghanistan. And what's even more important is how much more we can do for them during the remainder of our time here. And that's what the hospital staff will continue to do. Provide quality health care to as many Afghans as they can. Senior Airman David Larva, Bagram, Afghanistan. Thank you. Dr. Gulam Hadar Rafiki sits beside his sons, Maiwand and Sangar. The brothers suffered serious injuries in a car accident in Kabul on July 30th. Dr. Hadar Rafiki works for the Ministry of Health and understands the limitations of the health care system in Afghanistan. His dream is to see Afghanistan with its own national hospital. With this bad tragedy, I have, I am introduced to these people and I commit again, once again, with my people. I will pursue with Ministry of Health to use the, the capacity and the capability of this hospital to build the capacity of national hospital. No matter what comes out of this tragedy, Dr. Hadar Rafiki will never forget sitting by his son's bedside at Craig Joint Theater Hospital on Bagram. Air Force Staff Sergeant Alana Ingram, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Well, we give out clothes, a lot of toys, candy. We've given them a sugar rush, the likes of which Afghanistan has never seen before. Those are just a few of the gifts that Bagram's task force protector handed out to Afghan children and their families at the Egyptian hospital on base. Uh, it was a lot of fun today. Uh, we, we always enjoy coming out here. To... It's an act of basic human kindness, but it's also part of the U.S. mission in this country. This goes a long way to show that we're not here to conquer, we're here to help. Many of these service members have visited this hospital before. For Navy Master at Arms second class, Shannon Kingston, this visit is a little bittersweet. Today was a good way to go out since this is going to be my last one for this tour. Task Force Protector visits the Egyptian hospital about twice a month. Staff Sergeant Michael Jackson, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Uh, clothes, a lot of toys, candy, we've given them a sugar rush the likes of which Afghanistan has never seen before. Those are just a few of the gifts that Bagram's task force protector handed out to Afghan children and their families at the Egyptian hospital on base. Uh, it was a lot of fun today. Uh, we, we always enjoy coming out here. To... It's an act of basic human kindness, but it's also part of the U.S. mission in this country. This goes a long way to show that we're not here to conquer, we're here to help. Many of these service members have visited this hospital before. For Navy Master at Arms second class, Shannon Kingston, this visit is a little bittersweet. Today was a good way to go out since this is going to be my last one for this tour. Task Force Protector visits the Egyptian hospital about twice a month. Staff Sergeant Michael Jackson, Bagram Airfield. At this is your AFN Afghanistan Freedom Watch update. I'm Air Force Staff Sergeant Melissa Hay. Coalition forces to include U.S. Army, Navy, and Air Force have put forth a joint effort to get MRI machines in Afghanistan. 
Tech Sergeant Jason David was on hand as the first of three was unveiled. Most, if not all, new buildings in the military have a ribbon cutting ceremony. You have the speaker, in this region. the applause, and of course, the slice. Heart. But this ceremony was actually for this plain white trailer, and what's inside took a lot of people to get here. This was a great team effort amongst uh, multi different services to bring this multi million dollar project over here to evaluate the traumatic brain injury. This new addition to NATO medical facilities in Afghanistan not only provides faster exam times and higher performance imaging, it also strengthens our ability to help our wounded warriors. Tech Sergeant Jason David, Kandahar Airfield, Afghanistan. The last MRI machine was sent to Bagram Airfield. The machine was unveiled during a ribbon cutting ceremony at the Craig Joint Theater Hospital. This MRI will also greatly enhance doctors' ability to diagnose problems early while still in a deployed environment. The purpose of the MRI systems is to enhance your capability to diagnose and treat traumatic brain injuries. Kandahar, Bastion, and Bagram were chosen as the MRI fielding sites to bring this advanced technology closer to the points of injury of our wounded warriors. These service members are walking into the Craig Joint Theater Hospital at Bagram Airfield, which is different from the last time most of them saw this hospital. Thank you. Um, I was hit five times, twice in the leg, once in the groin, and twice in the belly. Thanks to Operation Proper Exit, Senior Chief Hockenberry and five other wounded warriors are getting the opportunity to visit places and people that save lives. They remember me going through. I actually um, met my ICU doctor who took care of me when I was there two years ago. Having him see me and he remembers how bad I was and actually him being very happy about how much better I am now just kind of hit home. It's great as a medic to be able to see them, but you know, more, more than that, I, I want them to be able to feel that, that closure and that put all of those pieces back together because we can only do so much physically. <laughs> Y'all saved my life because I knew my femoral artery was hit. This tour of Bagram didn't stop at the hospital. Neither did the wounded warriors thanking those who helped save lives on a daily basis. That was one of the reasons I wanted to come back, especially with Operation Proper Exit, um, to thank them. Even though it may not have been the same crew, these people are deployed. I can't be deployed right now, so they're here for me. So I really wanted to say thank you. Technical Sergeant Robert Smith, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Hello and welcome to Around the Air Force. Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan has three hospitals, each run by a different country. Airman First Class Keith Grody shows us how these three separate hospitals have come together to provide medical training to Afghan medical students. This is a historic moment. Three different hospitals are represented in this room from three different coalition countries. By signing this agreement, they're all sharing the responsibility of training up and coming Afghan medical professionals. Today uh, was uh, a milestone in history. We did a ceremonial signing of a strategic vision plan for an international 90-day in residency course. And what's wonderful about today is that this program is a partnership between three coalition hospitals. Each of the hospitals involved has a particular specialty they'll focus on in training Afghan medical students. The Korean hospital is a small in-residence training hospital with a strong women's health program. They'll focus on training women as health care providers. The Al Salam Egyptian hospital sees over 400 patients a day with care ranging from immunizations to modern operating rooms. They'll pair up medical students with an appropriate specialist for hands-on real-world training. I think this is a very exciting moment for us uh, because it, there's nothing more important than being able to help another um, a group of people who really need our help and I think health care is very important because it will extend the life of the people that are here it will help win the hearts and minds of the people here the US hospital does its part with a two-week preventative medicine course the end result of all this cooperation should be well-trained Afghan medical professionals Airman First Class Keith Grody Bagram Airfield Afghanistan Welcome to Freedom Watch Afghanistan, I'm Tech Sergeant Gene Taylor. Bagram Airfield hosted the number two man at the Pentagon today, Deputy Secretary of Defense, 
Gordon England. He ate breakfast with the troops and spent time listening to their stories and thanking them for their service. Secretary England is in Afghanistan meeting with division and brigade level combatant commanders to make a personal assessment of how things are shaping up in the field. Thousands of pounds of cargo are flowing through Bogham Airfield's flight line every day. Staff Sergeant Michael McCool shows us how the most precious of these items make it to the front lines where it's needed most. Cheech and Chong. Not just great comedians, but two reefers with the important job of holding a very special stash. Of blood, that is. The lab at Bagram receives brand new shipments of this highly perishable commodity every week. It's flown into Afghanistan from donation facilities all around the country. This is our second refrigerator, and it's usually our backup refrigerator for when we have a big shipment that comes in so we can hold everything. This is an APOS unit, and its expiration date is the 26th of August. So this person donated probably around 15th of July, and it looks like they donated at Fort Benning. Donated blood has a refrigerated shelf life of only 42 days. Getting it from the donation facility to the front lines quickly is top priority. I feel like I'm doing something, I'm making more of a difference. A lot of being a lab tech is behind the scenes, you're running um, different tests and it's all important. But here I'm actually dealing with stuff that saves people's lives and I feel very important. Within days of receiving the shipment from the states, it's flown from Bagram to the many forward operating bases in Afghanistan where the blood is needed most. Staff Sergeant Michael McCool, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Now here's a look at your photos from the field. Soldiers with the 527th Military Police Company and Task Force Centaur visit the New Graham District Center to meet with the district's new police chief, Anna Tula. The Centaurs are building a strong relationship with the Afghan National Police. The International Stabilization Assistance Force in Afghanistan is made up of 40 countries. Airman First Class Regina Mulder shows us how two of these countries are working together on more than just the battlefield. The Korean Hospital at Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan is a training hospital for Afghan medical workers. They see an average of 60 local patients a day and treat them for minor injuries and illnesses. And our interns are from a province nearby Korean Hospital. And through uh, this agreement, we can teach uh, how to uh, take care of uh, the common surgical disease and also how to take care of uh, the common uh, patients. The Korean hospital can treat minor injuries and diagnose patients, but they don't have inpatient facilities or operating rooms. However, Bagram's Egyptian Field Hospital does. Representatives of the two facilities are signing a memorandum of understanding that will allow them to share the use of the Egyptians' inpatient facilities and an operating room. I think that the best part of this agreement is uh, we um, uh, can be um, working together and can do um, co collaborating with the uh, Egyptian hospital and uh, through um, sharing uh, medical equipment and the facilities. The Egyptian hospital benefits because they'll be able to use the Koreans' endoscopy room and x-ray equipment. This agreement will give both hospitals the opportunity to provide care to patients that they couldn't in the past. That in turn will help these hospitals help the Afghan people to help themselves. Airman First Class Regina Mulder, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. I'm pretty thankful for today's ceremony that we are opening the Korean hospital which has been built and, re and constructed by the government of the Republic of Korea. Two, the Afghans, Koreans, and other coalition force members participated in a ribbon-cutting ceremony on Bagram Airfield. The Korean PRT finished their 10-month construction project for a new hospital and technical vocational center to help the people of Karwan. This year, we're going to have a forever to have a help uh, the Afghanistan people and uh, to, to help upgrading their 
skills and techniques of the young students. The Korean PRT hopes the hospital and school will help the Afghan people in Parwan and surrounding areas bring a better way. During the early morning attack at Bagram Airfield, first responders picked up the wounded and brought them here to the Heath and Craig Joint Theater Hospital. The wounded service member sustained a variety of injuries. Had a variety of shrapnel and some, uh, some serious limb injuries from the kinetic force from explosive type injuries. Not, not much in the way of gunshot wounds, mostly uh, explosive and shrapnel in, in nature. Colonel Benjamin also says the key to these service members' survival is quick medical care. Speed is very important, and it starts at the scene of the explosion. Because they happened at Bagram, we have the advantage of having this higher echelon of surgical care available right here at Bagram. So the injured, instead of going to a forward surgical station, came right to Bagram, where at our theater hospital here, we have all the specialists to do some of the more advanced surgeries uh, to, to save life, limb, and eyesight. Colonel Benjamin says the service members are expected to recover due to the quick reaction of the first responders. The one patient that needed additional care was already flown to Longstuhl, Germany. Senior Airman Jay Hernandez, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. Just after 5 a.m. on October 4th, the staff of the Craig Joint Theater Hospital successfully delivered the first Afghan baby born on Bagram Airfield. The baby's mother is a patient who was brought in five weeks ago after an explosion in her home. It's hard to find in war-torn Afghanistan. Afghans are often willing to travel great distances, hundreds of miles even, to find what others might consider miracles. Bagram Airfield's Egyptian Hospital is one such place. They receive patients from all over Afghanistan. The 65 medical personnel here provide cost-free care to an average of four or 500 Afghans every single day. And that number is only increasing with time. Due to the increased number of daily patients and the increase in surgeries, we have opened a second operating room, and we're going to open a third one. The staff here sees everyone from babies and children to parents and grandparents. As a full-service hospital, This is an on-base hospital where military members and contractors are seen for medical care. But during any given month, more than 100 local Afghans are also seen. And a lot of these patients are patients that, um, unfortunately, might be a child who was burned and came here and had skin grafting. They would then come back here for follow-up for several months after that. There is the clinic where patients are usually seen and then released for a later follow-up appointment. And then there is the ward. In the ward, you will find locals being treated long-term for more serious injuries. The technicians, nurses, and doctors are wonderful. I'm very happy and thankful for them. Every day I feel my body has improved. Everyone is very nice and takes care of me very well. They are so um, welcoming of our care 
and you know we treat them all the same that we would treat our, and then we do treat our active duty patients so I think we really help bring a positive image to uh, Air Force Medical and the United States as well. The hospital opens its doors for regular Afghan care on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Staff Sergeant Jason Armstrong, Bagram Airfield. Afghan workers are bearing the elements on the scaffolding above, the trenches below, or here at ground level, all pushing forward to help the Afghan Air Corps once again project its formidable air power. And they're going to switch, like day and night, coming over here to brand new facilities. The $183 million joint project will base 46 aircraft and be the hub for presidential airlift, air mobility, and aircraft maintenance for the Afghan Air Corps. And we're trying to help Afghanistan stand on their own feet. I mean, that's, you know, that's why we're here. That's why I'm here. The new facility is set to play a major role in ruling the skies above Afghanistan, and it's work done on the ground today that will ensure the job gets done. Forces based out of Bagram and on their way to Kabul stopped to provide medical relief to a 10-year-old Afghan boy who was struck by a civilian vehicle. He was immediately taken to Bagram's Craig Joint Theater Hospital for further medical care. Air Force Major Dr. Nicole Thomas, a pediatrician, said that he was conscious when he arrived at the hospital and underwent extensive surgery where coalition doctors stabilized his pelvis and other broken bones. Despite the quick maneuvers of the convoying soldiers and doctors, the boy suffered too much damage to his left leg and it had to be amputated. The boy's grandfather said through an interpreter if it wasn't for the soldiers stopping, the boy would have died and that his grandson is a lucky one. Reporting for Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan, Staff Sergeant Trevor Pedro, Pentagon Channel News. My name is Staff Sergeant Michael Foster, stationed at Mountain Home Air Force Base. My job out here is NCOIC the gate. I'm making sure all my people are safe, as well as the local nationals provide security, make sure everybody gets inside, safe and secure to get medical attention. We have anywhere from 100 to anywhere to close to 500 people a day. So we'll go up to them, we'll say good morning, we'll shake their hands, smiles, you know, some won't say hi, but they'll just smile and wave. What's up, JJ? What's up? What you're seeing is that we're having our patients come in at this time. They've been wanting to make sure that they don't pose, uh, pose a threat to us or themselves or the rest of the patients. Um, the mission is about to kick off for the day. They're going to come over and meet the doctor, tell them their illnesses. The doctor's going to decide if we can treat them on the inside. Once they get inside, they receive the treatment. They come from out, so we're probably the... Last I heard, we were the closest free clinic within five, a five-mile walk. We are the corn mission for, for Bagram. We have really good um, Afghan coalition forces out here, though. We walk around with them. If we have an issue, we let them know, say, hey, this needs to be fixed. We'll let them fix it first so they can establish their own authority with their own people. If we need to step in, then we step in, but we try to use that as a last resort. We all use the BAT system, we all track, we all enroll, we all come out here, provide security with our read guards as well. We arm them up as well. This is nothing I've done before. Um, it's a whole different story, and it's definitely extremely positive. Probably one of the most positive things I've done since I've been here. This is my second time here at Bagram as well. So it, it's, it's turning a new page for these people out here. I'm Senior Airman Sarah Milfeld from Bagram Airfield, and this is Freedom Watch Afghanistan. Afghan National Police officers graduated from a coalition-led police training course Thursday. The course, which was taught by Army Military Police, Air Force Security Forces, and U.S. contractors, included classes on ethics and values, community policing, map reading, and field hygiene. The graduation is just one example of the coalition providing valuable training to Afghans. During a press conference this week, Brigadier General Joseph Hotel, Deputy Commanding General for Operations with Combined Joint Task Force 82, said training Afghans to secure their own nation is vital to the long-term success of Afghanistan. We've identified, selected, and began training of the first Afghan uh, Army Commando units uh, that, will, uh, that will be uh, operational later this summer. We continue to train the Afghan National Army to conduct unilateral operations, and in many cases, uh, they, uh, they take the lead in both planning and execution. He says the Afghan National Police and the Afghan National Army continue to play a critical role in defeating the counterinsurgency in Afghanistan. 
The Korean hospital at Bagram Airfield reopened Thursday after a two-month stand-down. Coalition and local Afghan leaders were on hand for the ceremony. A majority of the patients this hospital will treat are local Afghans. The Korean hospital is a small hospital capable of treating patients categorized as level one. Nevertheless, we put out all our efforts into helping the people of Afghanistan. We strongly believe that We maintain a closely coordinated relationship with other hospitals on Bagram Airfield. Patients at level 2 are transported to the Egyptian hospital, while the ones at level 3 are transported to the U.S. hospital. We work side by side very efficiently in this system. More than 230,000 patients have received treatment at the hospital since it first opened. Closing its doors. The staff of the hospital has treated nearly 260,000 patients during their nine-month tour. I am very proud that uh, we joined for a, um, an operation enduring freedom uh, as a coalition forces. Seeing over 200 patients each day, the locals appreciate the efforts made by coalition forces. The Korean hospital has made us very happy because their treatment has made us feel better and we hope they stay in Afghanistan. The military staff at the hospital will be replaced by a Korean civilian staff in January, giving locals the same opportunity